Hi, in this technical episode of Conducting Pills, we're going to go through the introduction of Liszt Dante's Symphony and see how visual score study can help us from a technical point of view. Let's get started. This is what we see right at the beginning of the piece. There's quite a few information right away that we can gather just by looking at the score. First of all, the tempo marking, lento, which is of course, as usual, an indication of feeling rather than haze. One thing that we notice right away is the orchestration. We have two tenor trombones, a bass trombone and a tuba, violas, cellos and double basses. On the second bar, we have the first and second violins, and then eventually at the end of the phrase we have two timpani, followed by a tam-tam hit. Now the other very important thing uh, to notice that gives us a technical type of information is uh, the register. Everything is low. Now this tells us right away that we should be conducting in the mid-low area and not all the way up here. When you're all the way up here you're missing out on the weight that this score is calling for. The orchestration is calling for. One other thing, on each of the first um, three eight notes we have, uh, or list rather, adds uh, a tenuto marking. Now this might uh, give you also an idea for the tempo. The tempo, as uh, we notice, is lento, so it's rather slow or on the slow side, but it's lento Pesante. These marking give you the idea of something heavy. Clearly, Liszt doesn't want these to be rushed. So, should this be in four or should this be subdivided in eight? Now, at least for the beginning, the feeling is that it should be subdivided in eight in, in, eight in order to give that weight to each. Now, when you put it all together, then you're starting to conduct all the way down here. Um, pum, 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 pim. If you want to have a slightly slighter, faster tempo, you can still keep pum, 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 pim. You can still keep the weight of the sound as long as you carry and feel the weight in your arm. It's like literally lifting something from the bottom. Pum pim 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 pa pum pum. Now, if you notice, I've stretched a little bit the tempo, and this is coming to me from the drop accent. Now, a drop accent usually means a heavier type of sound. Linger on to, the, the the sound that the needs to come out, needs to be, to have an added weight compared to the one that's come before. And to finish the phrase in it, then I linger a little bit on the downbeat, pim, pim, in order to add that extra weight, pull the sound up and then release on the second beat. There's one more thing, the timpani and uh, the tempani. At the end of this phrase, you have a diminuendo, and then you have a crescendo of the timpani and an arrival on the tempton. Now, all of these information, you can gather this technical information, you can gather just by looking at the score. They're all in there. And the score is actually telling you also that you can perhaps, if you wish, split hands and use your start with your left hand, for instance, and then uh, uh, use your uh, right hand for the timpani and the tempo, or vice versa, or a combination of both. But the score itself tells you already that you can have that you have different op options at your disposal. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below this video and uh, ring the bell so that you will be notified every time a new video.
comes out. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video, if you have any suggestions for future ones, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of this series. In the meanwhile, please continue to enjoy music and be well.